fashion. Hi, Patricia Walton here. I want to talk about uh, David Prater and his office there in Oklahoma City. Um, and we're going to be discussing whether or not he actually will be, uh, his November election is coming up, and will anybody challenge him to the actual uh, position that he is currently in? So do Oklahoma see David Prater as a criminal handling cases in their county? After Oklahoma was under investigation for the hang em high attitude of Bob Macy and his sidekick, Joyce Gilchrist, also known as Black Magic, numerous convictions were overturned. Oklahoma has yet to hold prosecutors accountable for their misconduct and their forensic team accountable for fabricating evidence. David Prater's office seems to manufacture prosecuting attorneys that go above the laws in the United States and Oklahoma. There are no open records policy as stated by the laws. Governor Mary Filan made a change to the open records policy making it transparency. Oklahoma has been doing questionable misconduct since Bob Macy. In the Daniel Holtzclaw case, prosecuting attorney Galen Geiger misrepresented DNA lump sum the victims to gain a conviction. He committed prosecutorial misconduct and today he still has a job. But under D.A. Prater, what can Oklahomans honestly expect? Fraud was committed by the chemist Elaine Taylor while working the DNA evidence in the Holtzclaw case. But like Joyce Gilchrist, dubbed as Black Magic, she too escaped charges and suddenly became retired when records are requested. You get everything under the sun except what you requested pertaining to the case. Some examples would include a pamphlet for their new DNA processing machine telling the forensic analysis how to run the DNA and read the actual results. To the laboratory at Oklahoma City, we thank you for that. That, ac that actually made us question what was going on for the Holtzclaw case. I myself, after finding that information, I found out truly the man was innocent. Oklahoma has made the Holtzclaw case their money-making machine for their state. After, through the, after sifting through the records request that we received, I started noticing several things going on in there, like dinners for uh, on the case, speaking about the case, that were at $250 a plate. An innocent man rots in prison and he has become your money-making machine. Oklahoma was able to update themselves with a brand new laboratory, get extra funds under the federal government. Your actions in the Holtzclaw case has not gone unnoticed. Neither has the criminal activity you have committed against the public in your state. in the DA's office with David Prater. Assistant Attorney General Jennifer B. Miller claimed in the Holtzclaw case that they never received a Pellet's motion for evidentiary hearing and are now asking the court to file everything under a sealed motion. The state has an additional 60 days to respond. The Holtzclaw family has been waiting for months years for something to actually turn in favor for their loved one and yet it seems that the state is allowed to procrastinate and withhold evidence and seal the evidence up so that the family cannot actually gain that information to free their loved one. Uh, the judges that were actually involved in this was a Gary L. Lumpkin presiding judge, a David B. Lewis, vice presiding judge, uh, Mark beside his name was a CIR only, 
uh, Robert L. Hudson, judge, and Dana Curran, judge. And of course, they have still listed the recused judge, Scott Rowland, uh, with no signature. But rumor has it, now Jimmy Harmon, known as the Sleaze, has taken the position. The clerk's name filing the motion for the state is John D. Haddon on the Oklahoma City website. Numerous individuals are wondering if Oklahomans plan to remove David Prater or if anyone will challenge him during the 2018 election. After all, David Prater had been fired from the DA's office for lying and engaging in questionable relationship, later acquitted of such allegations. However, the DA's office has a long track history of questionable conduct from Assistant District Attorney Stephanie Miller and Pam Kimbrough, whom were fired for not telling the defense attorney that a witness had changed their story. It makes me wonder if someone could actually physically withhold, if a prosecuting attorney is not held up to the standards that they are actually uh, given the job to do. We as Americans, we need to stand up and say, hey, we're not going to tolerate this stuff. We're not, we're just not going to do it. And for myself, what that, uh, what these two actual district attorneys did, Stephanie Miller and Pam Kimbrough, uh, it also reminds me of the stuff that currently Daniel Holtzclaw had to face with Galen Geiger. Um, upon further review, Stephanie Miller is Assistant Stephanie Miller of the Attorney General's Office, whom was never disbar disbarred for conduct, but was fined thereby answering the question for Oklahoma's that the DA's office is a political stone for attorneys. I've done some thorough research on this and actually most of the stuff that I had talked about today just kind of blew my mind. I mean if you're fired from somewhere else you should not get to keep your uh, credentials for continuing on as an attorney of any kind. Okay once you are found to be doing things that are wrong you should not be allowed to continue on as anything else your license should be suspended you should be done at that point and no longer able to actually continue on but we're going to put some things down in the box so that we can you know all of my um followings of where i got all the information and everything else and i encourage everyone if you are seeing this kind of conduct going on in your state, it does not matter what state it is. Follow up on it. Post about it. Get it on YouTube. Put it on your Facebook page. Get it out there in social media so other people can see. And keep questioning and calling these people out because they need people speaking out against them. Again, thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day.